DJI have had incorrect maps for the last few years and some users have been relying on these. We're going to talk through what's changed and how to identify the correct airspace that everyone, even sub 50 gram drones, has to obey. So at last, DJI have updated their geo zones on their maps, and it's better. I've been calling for this over the past two years. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I'm always banging on about how bad the DJI maps are. DJI, whose drones most of the fly, has removed nearly all of its restrictions. Now you can take off anywhere. Isn't that great news? Well, if you've been relying on DJI maps for flight authorization or checking the airspace, then you might have been flying illegally already. You need to watch this. We're gonna look at how we got into this situation and how to identify the correct airspace here in UK and how to find this correct information. I should say that this video is recorded in early 2024 and the rules and regulations are based around this time. Like I said, I've been one of many people, including the CAA, calling for DJI to update its geolock zones for a couple of years now. I've unknowingly flown in places I didn't have permission to fly and I've flown in places where it's perfectly legal to fly and had DJI freeze my drone in midair, almost resulting in me losing the drone. I wonder if this has ever happened to you. Let me know in the comments. DJI first implemented these geo zones in 2013 to help drone flyers fly legally. But as you can see here, they were never correct. People would rely exclusively on the DJI maps to judge whether it was legal to fly. And because many of the airports weren't even listed, people would often get in trouble. Also, DJI's approval process looks very official and people often thought they'd applied correctly for permission to fly. But of course, this was never the case. It got so bad that in October 2023, the CAA even put out a warning to tell people not to rely on manufacturers' geo zones and maps. But of course, unless you check the drone code website regularly, you may not have seen that. Skywise is a great option for updates, but I'm not sure I saw this update on there. The great thing about Skywise, it also gives you advanced notification of NOTAMs. And if you don't know what a NOTAM is, then keep watching along and I'll explain that later. So in January of this year, DJI have been going through the process of removing the old incorrect maps from the UK and EU and placing them with what seems like the correct airspace. However, there's a catch. So even though DJI are now apparently showing the correct airspace in many cases, they are just calling them enhanced risk airspace with no requirement to unlock anything before you fly. This could cause real issues for the send it crowd and also those who don't know how to check airspace, which is mainly why I wanted to do this video. Remember, every drone must obey airspace restrictions regardless of their weight. I mean, I did a more in-depth video talking about airspace and A1, A2 and A3 subcategories, and I'll put that link at the end of the video. The CAA don't have an official app to download, you'll see a list of approved sources of UK airspace on the CAA drone code pages though, and I'll put the links for those in the description also. Even though the DJI maps appear in most cases to be showing UK airspace correctly, it lacks any information on those zones. So you'll still need to use something like Altitude Angel or one of the other sources to identify these areas, and if needed, get permission to fly there. So I'm just gonna show you now as I fire up Altitude Angel and you can see what filters I've turned on so you can help identify airspace for yourself. You need to look for flight restriction zones or FRZs, danger areas and prisons mainly. Helpfully, most of these are marked in red. You do not need to obey controlled airspace. That's for manned aviation. If you're unsure what filters you need to turn on in Altitude Angel, then you can always compare the airspace between Altitude Angel and the official NATS link and that's gonna give you a pretty good understanding of exactly what you need to turn on and what you don't. Of course, you always need to be able to see your drone so you can avoid any potential conflict with your drone and other users of the sky, whether that be manned aviation, other drone users, or even birds. When you look through, you will see some areas are legacy. This doesn't mean these zones don't exist anymore. It means you need to contact them directly to get approval. I'll often phone using the numbers listed in the Altitude Angel app 
and ask for their approval process. Be aware this can take up to three weeks, so give yourself time, although it can be quicker too. Some areas are listed as UTM ready. You can apply directly through the app to get approval to fly there. I've not done this yet, I've got to try it. Other areas will ask you to submit a non-standard flight request through the NATS website. For instance, Farnborough asks you to do this. So what about danger areas? So as you can see on the map, central London is covered by three areas, EGR 157, EGR 158, and 159. These three areas are areas you cannot fly in without approval. To gain approval, it's a similar process through the NATS website, but you'll need an enhanced non-standard flight request. Bearing in mind also that the largest area covering London than EG160 is only for helicopters, so that actually helps quite a lot. You may or may not know that the rules around prisons have recently changed. They now have a 400 meter zone around them that you can't fly without permission. So don't let that one catch you out. Sensitive areas that could be considered of national security importance are also now not allowed to be flown over, but in short, use your common sense. So what are NOTAMs? Up and coming NOTAMs or notice to airmen are shown in blue when they're not active or actively restricting flights. You may see these for things like light displays, uh, jamming tests, carnivals, even some concerts have got NOTAMs nowadays. And they are only red when they are active. And if they are red, you must treat them like a flight restriction zone. But if they're just blue, like for instance, we had uh, a train that had lots and lots of lights on it and that gave a nice display, but it was really just a, a notification that if you're flying over for manned aviation as well, that don't be distracted by it or expect to see it. Obviously things like air shows are gonna have no TAMs. Just remember the times and dates of the restriction will be shown in the text. When they're active, they will turn red. You should always check when planning your flight and again when doing your pre-flight checks just in case something has changed. And also remember that DJI isn't going to show you no TAMs in the apps, in their maps, or very unlikely to. If you're unsure if you're likely to drift into FRZ unknowingly, then you need to look a bit more and a bit longer at the maps to identify some landmarks to stay on the right side of it. Because there's no almost, you're either in it or you're not. So what about future updates? In the most recent CAA consultation, it talked about making better use of geofencing through drone manufacturers apps. So these areas may become geofenced again in the future. I see that DJI have now got a before you fly in England tab that tells you exactly what you need to fly legally before you actually do it. I think this is a great step forward, but I wonder how long it'll be before we end up needing to put our fly information in there so that be our operator ID and our fire ID before it'll actually take off. I think this is the way it's going but what do you think? It seems the drone flying industry or hobby is always in flux and it's just about to change. If you want to stay updated you can do a couple of things. First sign up for the Skywise newsletter through the CAA website. Second is hit the subscribe button. I always try and put out a video that's short and concise and keep you updated. After reading the most recent CAA consultation, do you think things will become more lenient or stricter? Uh, but let me know, what do you think about these changes? If you found some value to the video, then give me a thumbs up. If you found this video useful, then you definitely might like this one. 